Hi everyone, this is Nurse Anna from NurseStudy.net and today we're going to be doing a nursing overview for chronic renal failure. This website is not intended to provide medical advice. The articles on this website are intended for entertainment or educational value only. While we strive to offer 100% accuracy, medical procedures are rapidly changing and laws vary greatly from location. Chronic renal failure, CRF, also known as chronic kidney disease, CKD, is an irreversible long-term condition characterized by a gradual decline in kidney function. Over time, it could lead to end-stage renal failure, which will require the need for dialysis or a kidney transplant. Kidneys play important roles in the human body. They manage fluid balance, regulate electrolyte and pH levels, filter out and excrete waste and toxins, they help in the production of hormones. Due to the kidney's many bodily functions, the signs and symptoms of CRF can be varied and can progress as the kidney function declines. The treatment of CRF or chronic renal failure aims at slowing the disease progression by addressing the underlying cause. Some of the signs and symptoms of CRF would be oliguria, which is a low urine output of less than 400 ml per day, and urea, no urine output, nausea and vomiting, loss of appetite, fatigue and weakness, decrease in mental sharpness, muscle twitching and cramping, swelling of feet and ankles, persistent itching, chest pain which occurs when the fluid builds up around the heart lining, shortness of breath if the fluid builds up in the lungs, hypertension, and sleep problems. Causes and risk factors of chronic renal failure type 1 or type 2 diabetes. Diabetes causes micro and macrovascular complications. Kidneys are often affected by the damage to the renal blood vessels, which will cause damage and reduction to the kidney functions. Hypertension. Hypertension can cause vascular issues, which can affect blood vessels in the kidneys, therefore reducing function and causing damage. Glomular nephritis. Prolonged inflammation of the glomuli in the kidneys can lead to chronic renal failure. Interstitial nephritis. Unresolved or prolonged interstitial nephritis can lead to swelling in between kidney tubules, leading to CRF. Polycystic kidney disease. Clusters of cysts can sometimes build up in the kidneys. If unresolved, it can lead to CRF as a complication. Long-term obstruction of the urinary tract from conditions such as enlarged prostate, kidney stones, and some cancers. Pyelonephritis. Kidney infection, if left untreated or if prolonged, can cause permanent damage to the kidneys. Cardiovascular disease. Just like in diabetes, cardiovascular problems can cause CRF by affecting and damaging blood vessels in the kidneys. The following are risk factors that can affect the development of CRF. Smoking. Smoking can cause vascular damage that can affect kidney function. Next, obesity. Obese patients require heightened metabolic demands causing the kidneys to be overworked leading to CRF if not addressed. Race. African American, Native American, or Asian American descent. CRF is known to be higher in races known to have higher prevalence of hypertension and cardiovascular disease. There is also a family history of kidney disease. Abnormal kidney structure. And this is where anatomical issues can cause changes to kidney functions, which can also lead to CRF. Older age. Organs decline and lose function as the human body ages. Complications of renal failure. The kidneys play important functions in the human body. A reduction in its function can cause complications such as fluid retention. Kidneys play a role in regulation of fluid volume. Hence, reduction in its function can cause peripheral edema, pulmonary edema, and pericardial effusion. Hyperkalemia. Extra potassium in the body is excreted through the kidneys. Impairment of this function can cause buildup of potassium in the bloodstream. Cardiovascular disease. Kidneys help in the fluid regulation in the body. It also helps in the regulation of blood pressure through hormone regulation. Changes in these processes can cause hypertension, which is commonly related to cardiovascular problems. Weak bones and an increased risk of bone fractures. 
CRF causes reduced vitamin D production and low phosphorus levels causing hypocalcemia. The body compensates by moving the calcium from the bones to the bloodstream causing weak bones. Anemia. CRF causes the reduction of the production of erythropoietin, a hormone that triggers the bone marrow to produce red blood cells. Neurological complications. Regulation of waste in the body is one of the many important roles of the kidneys. Buildup of the waste can cause neurological problems. Decreased immune response. Reduction in immunity is commonly seen in patients with CRF. This can lead to increased susceptibility to infection. Pericarditis. Uremic pericarditis can happen because of the buildup of toxins in the human body. And irreversible damage to the kidneys, which is now called end-stage kidney disease. Diagnosis of chronic renal failure, history taking and physical exam, a detailed medical and family history will be taken by the healthcare provider when making a diagnosis of chronic renal failure. Physical examination will also be done to correlate with the results of the diagnostic procedures. Blood tests, creatinine and urea are blood markers that will reflect kidney function. Estimated glomular filtration rate, also known as EGFR can help indicate the stage of renal disease. Urine tests to give healthcare providers information about the patient's kidney function. Imaging tests such as CT scan to gather information about the current structure and size of the kidneys and other related organs. Kidney biopsy to collect a tissue sample that will be examined under the microscope, which can give a lot of information as to what is causing the kidney problem. Treatments for chronic renal failure. Chronic renal failure is irreversible and often non-curable. Measures can be taken to manage signs and symptoms, reduce complications, and slow the progression of the disease. If treatment options are unsuccessful, the damage can lead to end-stage kidney disease, which will then require the need for dialysis or kidney transplant. The treatment includes treating the underlying cause of the chronic renal failure. However, this is not always successful as the disease may persist and progress. Addressing the complications in signs and symptoms is central to the treatment of CRF. Medications. The following medications can be used to manage CRF. Antihypertensive medications. Drugs such as angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors or ACE inhibitors or angiotensin II receptor blockers are prescribed to regulate blood pressure and preserve kidney function. Anti-cholesterol drugs. Cholesterol levels must be regulated to reduce the risk of cardiovascular problems. Diuretics. To relieve swelling, these can help address the fluid balance by excreting excess fluids in the body. Medications to protect the bones. Calcium, vitamin D, phosphate supplements can be given to support the bones of CRF patients. Medications to treat anemia. Erythropoietin is usually given to patients with CRF to address anemia, which can reduce associated weakness and fatigue. Other treatments would include low-protein diet. Low-protein diet is usually prescribed to patients with CRF. The body's processing of protein causes accumulation of waste, which are filtered by the kidneys. Reduction of dietary protein means reduction of waste products, giving the kidneys rest and preventing further deterioration of renal perfusion and function. Lifestyle changes. The patient should be encouraged to undergo a smoking cessation program to prevent further vascular damage. An exercise regimen, as recommended by the physiotherapy team, should also be considered. If the patient is diabetic, the diabetes should be well controlled as worsening of this condition can affect kidney function. A sample nursing care plan for this patient would be nursing diagnosis, ineffective renal tissue perfusion related to glomular malfunction secondary to chronic renal failure as evidenced by increased lab results, oliguria, anuria, peripheral edema, hypertension, muscle twitching, and cramping, fatigue, and weakness. The desired outcome would be the patient will actively participate in the treatment plan and will be able to demonstrate behaviors that will help prevent complications. An intervention would be assess and monitor vital signs. Rationale, 
To establish baseline data, to monitor the patient's blood pressure levels as hypertension can worsen kidney damage, and fever may also indicate disease progression or the absence of infection. Another intervention would be perform the necessary blood tests as ordered and the rationale to monitor renal function. Another intervention would be encourage the patient to have a low protein diet and start a food chart. The rationale would be reduction of dietary protein means, reduction of waste products, giving the kidneys rest and preventing further deterioration of renal perfusion and function. Food charting can also help monitor dietary protein and caloric intake. For more information and even more care plans on chronic renal failure, visit us at nursestudy.net. And we have lots of topics, subjects, charts, care plans uh, for you guys to help you through nursing school. This is Nurse Anna from nursestudy.net. Thanks for listening.